Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this um, gorgeous June day, summer day. Hasn't it been an incredibly hot? Um, I, I, I love it, um, but um, also makes me <laughs> feel a bit lazy. But um, but yes, I've been enjoying it very much and enjoying the garden as a result. Uh, my one and Abigail's. So uh, yes, I hope you're doing. I hope you're feeling good on this um, sunny Tuesday, the 2nd of June, 2020. This is your Yoga Solutions Live with me, Mark J. Aquaviva, the Envirosomatic Approach to Bodywork. So, yes, um, I don't think I've had any uh, questions today. I, I, I don't get round to, I, I, I can't see after about 10 minutes before the thing. So if you put a question on the original post then uh, I apologize for not knowing about it but if you're here now then feel free to um, drop me a question um, if not that, that's absolutely fine I I have my own question to answer today actually um, yes uh, uh, yes let me tune in um, yes I, 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 I was up last night with a little bit of um, a uh, bit of a twist in my spine uh, and um, it's a thing that's used to happen a lot a lot and uh, I've had all sorts of theories about why it happens uh, uh, from there's something in my skull to there's something in my sacrum uh, aren't the answer is probably it's both <laughs> as the diagnosis um, but uh, yeah the solution in terms of solution it is really interesting when when the body goes into spasm, it's very hard to understand what's going on. And, um, you know, even though I've come up with this stuff, to look at my own sort of relationships um, directly when I'm in, when, when the body's in lockdown, <laughs> um, it's quite tricky for me. Um, and so, I, you know, I understand um, how difficult it is for other people. Because, uh, you know, I, I've got solutions. And, um, yeah, anyway, uh, let, let me uh, tell you a little bit about what the, what the thing is. Um, when, um, it, it used to happen a lot. It used to happen, um, well, an awful lot when I started yoga 30 years ago as an adult. Um, and all, all that would happen was suddenly my, my sacrum would freeze and I'd find myself doing this sort of thing. And, um... I wouldn't be able to bend down, I wouldn't be able to get up again if I did bend down. Um, and uh, it was all around a holding pattern in the whole of the spine, uh, from the sacrum up to the lumbers. And uh, yes, um, early days I, I didn't really ha have any solutions because um, it was being seen as a, as a structural thing, as in... Um, my one hip was higher than the other, one shoulder was higher than the other, uh, my head was off of, out of kilter. It was all the diagnoses, the scoli scoliotic patterning, the lordotic patterning, the kyphotic patterning. And um, none of those things offered any solutions because it was all about how I was holding myself. Which um, started to, to dispel and I started to find solutions when I could... When I understood that what I needed to relate to was what I was doing, how I was relating to the earth and how I was relating to space and you know, my envirosomatic thing that um, I finally <laughs> given a name to. Um, yeah, um, so anyway, um, so to let you know, what, what most, a lot of people have a left-right divide. There's, there's, there's hardly anyone that I know um, that hasn't got some kind of scoliotic pattern at some point in their spine and it's usually to do with handedness so i'm right-handed so and right-footed so what i what i f feel what i experience is the right hand side is strong and can support me and the left hand side is kind of um, not so supportive but more sensitive so i can kind of feel what's going on more on the left hand side uh, my other experience another way of seeing things is 
um, I've noticed on a structural level that my right hand side is prone to flexion. Uh, I won't do it because uh, it'll bring on the spasm again. Um, the right hand side is prone to flexion in the spine as a whole and the left hand side is prone to extension and uh, and the, the, the two uh, feel like when I'm flexed on the right hand side it feels relaxing when I'm extending on the left hand side it feels it feels relaxing and to do the opposite with both with either uh, feels like work so when I'm doing back bends, for example, uh, the left hand side goes along quite happily and um, I hardly notice anything, any complications or difficulties with that. But the right hand side feels blocked in, in the approach to uh, back bending. And when I go into um, spasm, and the last time this happened was probably about 10 years ago, and I, I you know, it wasn't, uh, it's not a big problem, you know, uh, today, uh, because 10 years ago, um, I was less adept at instantly solving it. Um, so I, I've got a better idea of these days. So, um, so I can find a way of um, extricating myself from the complication quite, quite swiftly, but the pattern is still there. Um, the, the, the propensity is still there, obviously. And, um, uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, what was I saying? Yeah. The yes. If I'm if I'm flexing, um, especially when this thing is going on, my left hand side really doesn't want to do it. Um, it really doesn't want to flex, and the right hand side hurts when it flexes, which is kind of interesting. So. Um, yeah, anyway, I, I was I was sort of, because I wasn't in, I'm not in agony. <laughs> I just feel a bit stiff. I feel a bit awkward. Um, yeah, because I wasn't in agony, I could, I could be a little more objective with these patterns and um, trying to find a solution, and a solution based on how I support myself, how I relate to my earth and how I relate to space. And, um, yeah, and the solution came to me in, in quite interesting terms. So um, I, think, I think rather than just talking about it, I might do some practice and share with you my, my uh, process in it so that um, anyone with a left-right divide can, can relate to this, a, a noticeable left-right divide. And um, yeah, the, 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 the issues aren't really with the mechanics of the body because um, fixing the mechanics of the body does nothing. It just make, it adds more tension, it adds more complication. And when there's holding patterns around a shape, then you're going to pull on the place that is um, complaining, uh, whatever you do, because you're restricting movement, essentially. And, and what we need when we, we, when we have a complication going on what we need is to find support from our touch that travels through our bones and doesn't pull the spine around in any way it doesn't want to go. And we want a relationship to space that makes that possible. So, um, yes, uh, let's see. Um, okay, so, so um, principle-wise, um, the way I understand the body relates to the earth is the the upper body generally relates to the base on the exact opposite side so if I'm in my um, front ribs those front ribs my left front ribs want to relate to the base at the back on the right my right front ribs want to relate to the base of the back on the left. And when the front ribs relate, relate to the base at the back, there is a flexion response. Okay? Um, from the front ribs. So the front of the body sort of relates cross diagonally to the base behind you. And uh, the, the reason I've come to this conclusion is it's the way we walk, it's the way we ambulate. It's, uh, there's um, a sidedness that goes through the body that stops us being in that sort of heavy-sided thing. 
and uh, being heavy directly down through touch is the problem for most of our postural issues. So, uh, and this through the body cross diagonally relationship to contact is the solution. So the front ribs like to relate to the back opposite base and, and that will lead to flexion in that relationship. And that, that's uh, one of my sort of body pattern understandings. The, and and you, can, you can sort of work your way around the rib cage. So the left side of my ribs, um, instead of being heavy on the left side, which would, if I, if I did more than that, would cause me to spasm again. Um, the left side of the ribs, when I'm side bending to the left using them, it's because they relate to the right outside edge of the base and similarly with the right ribs to the left outside edge of the base. I, I, I could easily hang my weight over the ribs to cause flexion but that's not a, that's not a, um, uh, to cause a side bend but that's not um, an envirosomatic relationship. It's me being inside my own body in my own weight and hanging that weight off my spine and um, it, it's not wrong there are there are, we want to be able to relax but if that's what relaxation means to you then you're what you're actually doing is you're giving the job of supporting yourself to to the spine and the, the ribs are part of the spine so um, what was I saying oh yes so instead of hanging over um, the side ribs like to relate to the opposite side base in ambulation, in movement, in support. And, and, and all of these relationships are breathing relationships. Um, as in, you know, if I'm getting my right side ribs to be with the left base, it's a, it's a breathing relationship. So uh, the breath can be something that moves between the point of contact, the point of support, and these ribs and uh, and then when I release the breath these things come together to support me um, and w when I have that relationship to contact what happens directly on the same side uh, of the contact is a relationship to space so I, I hope I'm not um, uh, knotting your head up with this it's the opposite of how we normally move, uh, or how we, how we think. We think of weight. We think of the body having weight that we have to carry. And when you have that idea, that relationship to the world, then you're, what you're doing is you're, giving, you're being heavy on the side that you're giving weight to, but you're being heavy on the body, so so you get that sort of um, lolling around feeling where the spine carries your weight. When you have a relationship to your earth that is functional, um, that relationship, the opposite side ribs to that side, gives me a relationship to space from that point of contact. So what the body does in relationship to where you put your weight is it becomes lighter. You, b you get a relationship to space from the point of contact and it's because of this crisscross relationship, you see. I hope that's sort of made some sort of sense. Okay, and it, it's not the, obviously it's not the only way to move, but it's a way of moving and supporting yourself that means giving your weight to your touch supports you in space which by definition takes the job of holding yourself up away from the spine. It's, not, it's no longer necessary. And uh, not just the spine, the joints as well. Okay. So, um, what's the magical mystery tool so far? The, these ribs to the opposite base gives me a flexion response. Um, these ribs to the opposite base gives me a flexion response from these ribs. These ribs to the side of my mace gives me a side bending response, which is a relationship to space on that side. 
relationship to space on that side, coming from these ribs being with the ground underneath me. These back ribs The lower back ribs. It's uh, a common area to lift from in a kind of an adrenal lift, using these muscles to hoik yourself up. But if you can um, relate to your ground, then these left lower back ribs relating to the right front base allows me to release up away from the front right base in space. These right lower back ribs, and this is my difficulty <laughs> relating, and you can see what happens when I get into that, I pick up my base. But if I can organize things in space so that these lower back ribs on the right hand side can find support from the left front base, so I have to reorganize myself in space quite a lot to find that, then what I get is a relationship to space on the left hand side at the front. So I, bec I become, I, I, I extend, but it's not because I'm staying put and lifting myself with my back, it's because my ribs are relating to the touch. So if I can if I can find that then my sidedness can start to shift because what I'm used to is I'm used to being heavy on the right sit bone which is me um being heavy in the front on the right and hanging my weight off these muscles And I've always felt that I'm more grounded on this side, but actually I'm just more heavy. So when I go into spasm, it's my body telling me what I need to do, which is, um, that was the big light that went on this morning, that each time my back has gone wrong, it's been my body trying to show me how to find support. And because it's always got that feeling of the of a kind of fixed extension on the right hand side but my reaction to it is to is to go oh my god i'm holding uh, and and hold as a result of the oh my god experience but if i can listen to the body and allow these ribs to relate to support appropriately then what i get is a lightness that allows this uh, uh, allows uh, me to be in space on the in the front on the left hand side and then um, because I'm used to overextending on the on the left hand side um, that's a, also a holding pattern but it's a different one it's an oppositional one if I've got the back right ribs giving their weight relating to the front left base, I can also allow the front left ribs to find a grounded relationship to the back right base. And if I do that, I have a, vo a very unusual experience. The experience feels like, and, and because I'm sort of describing it, I'm exaggerating it, it feels like, um, what was I saying? Yeah, it, 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 f it feels like I'm pulling myself into a, a very odd shape, which is the opposite of my usual shape. And you might see my right shoulder is lifted and I'm turned slightly to the right. Uh, I'm, I'm exaggerating it. Um, now, because... <laughs> Because of this thing, that's, that's what I feel like is going on, and I'm, I'm exaggerating it to show you. But if I settle through my base so that the back left ribs also relate to the front right base, and the front right ribs also relate to the back left base, 
I've got this very sort of odd feeling of the opposite pattern. As in, I'm grounded on my left hand side and I'm light and extended on my right hand side. That's what it feels like. But I can kind of see on the screen. Yes, I can, I, I can sort of see on the screen that I'm pretty much vertical. But I feel like I'm turning to the right <laughs> and side bending, what's that? Turning to the right, lifting on the right hand side and uh, pulling down on the left, at the front. That's what it feels like. But these things are my interpretation of the, the difference of sensation. When my nervous system, when I get familiar with the relationships, it's basic, it becomes me relating to my touch. And when I can do that through the breath and its release, then what happens is these ribs start to behave differently as I breathe. There's more of an elevation of the back on the right. And when I release the breath, there's more of a containment from the ribs on the left. Because I'm relating to my earth actually quite equally now. It feels different. But if I was to measure the pressure underneath my base at all points of contact, it feels like it would be more, more similar. The hardest part for me right at this moment is where to put my head. Because usually, if I recreate the normal thing, I'm there. And usually my head's over here somewhere. So usually I have to hold my head up on the left hand side. And that's my normal pattern. So I, w I don't want to stay with it too long because it will kick in. It will take over. So I'm going to recreate lower back ribs to front left base. So I get that lightness. And uh, what I can feel is something deep on the inside is letting go as a result. Um, if I can tune out of uh, the, the strangeness of experience in my spine. What that allows is an elongation on the right hand side. Um, lower front ribs to the right back base, lower front left ribs to the right back base. Now I feel I'm now I'm turning. But if that can become a breathing relationship as well, then it can naturalize. The other thing that I'm getting is direct from the touch of the right sit bone as well as these ribs, these left ribs grounding in that direction directly on that side I'm getting a lightness away from the ground which is unusual and when, and when I look at my my body when I'm practicing usually my right hand side is more built up and flexed in this area with the, with the muscles um, actually uh, thicker because they're used to carrying the weight but in this moment those muscles are not being used they're not being used to hold me up instead I'm resting through the spine on that side and these muscles don't know what to do <laughs> but um, it's a relief nonetheless so I've got that going on but I'm, I'm all a bit I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit sided I'm sort of front left and back right so if I can the extension away from the ground on the left hand side is already there, it's not a problem. But what I need to do is ground from the right ribs to the left sit bone. And there we are, I'm back in the middle. Now the thing that's going to have to compensate now, the thing that's going to have to allow things to be different, because it feels like my left shoulder is way lower than my right, it's not, <laughs> but it feels like it. Um, the thing that has to adjust is my nervous system my line of sight and right this second I can see on the screen I'm kind of vertical but it feels like I'm hanging my head to the left isn't that interesting so as long as I'm referring to myself according to what in relationship to what's normal 
I'm going to remain confused and I'm going to be sort of hovering in this holding pattern of not knowing where I'm supposed to be. But if I start to relate to the space around me and the space above me, so the space behind, either side, through the breath, and its release, so I can relate to the space above me from below, I can start to get a sense of, the, of resting through the structure. And I'm talking about the axis of the spine. So rather than me adjusting my body and getting confused by the difference, I can settle into the bones of the matter and this is a breathing relationship, so I, I breathe into the earth and space above me. I feel supported by that contact. And when I release the breath into those two surfaces, I feel supported back from both, so I can travel through the spine. And what's starting to happen now for me is as the spine rests together, the local tensions are starting to release. And I'm starting to, get, starting to get a different proprioceptive sense of myself as a result. That has all sorts of interesting features. Um, a difference in the core, a difference in musculature, a difference in position. But as, lo as long as if I go into that, I will get lost. So I need to stay with the contact I make with the earth, make it about equal as I breathe and release the breath. The contact I make with space behind and either side of me, make it about equal as I breathe and release back into the center. And when those things are relating from my earth, I meet space. So I'm releasing away from where I touch the ground. and releasing to the ground in a cross-diagonal relationship so that, so that um, as I give down, I meet up. The body comes together in this way. So you get a feeling of releasing up through the center. So I can now, once again, through those things, my relationship to earth and space, I can find the center and relate to above from below, to below from above, from that center. And that center is the spine behind the heart. The center of the breath, center of the release of the breath. And kind of uh, in Chinese medicine is where the mind lives. So I think us in the West need to start to acknowledge that and begin looking from the heart. And something interesting happens when I do that. Relating to above and below from the heart center. And really that's, that's what all my yoga is about. Mm. I, I didn't really do any postures this morning. Um, I, um, and uh, I'm nearly out of time. I, um, I, I would have, um, if I'd had more time, I would have, uh, and less explanation, I would have done things that involved finding extension responses from the way I use my leg, legs in standing, one leg forwards, one leg back, exploring the inner and the outer, until I could let go of that tension. Uh, the tension that was holding me down on the right, and the tension that's holding me up on the, on the left, until I could let go of those tensions. And um, I, and I did a little bit of that this morning, so um, so uh, I'm sorry I didn't share it with you. But uh, I hope that was interesting for you. It's a um, bit of a magical mystery tour of the body's relationships to itself, and I, I, it might seem complicated, but it simplifies the moment you can relate these things through the breath to earth and space. And when your attention is with those things, you get a, a clearer picture of what's going on that is not masked by comparing to what is normal. And um, yeah, uh, I hope that's of value in some way in your own practice. Um, yeah, talking of which, um, I'm, I'm thinking of um, 
running beginning my next um, CPD course for dedicated practitioners. Uh, the core intelligence um, course was it was so well received. People really got a lot of benefit out of um, being with it on a weekly basis. And, I, and I'm thinking of doing the next one, which will be about the body's relationships. Um, it will involve these sort of a lot of these details, and um, because uh, all my solutions end up with the body relating to itself um, in new ways, by definition, in new ways, and we we all need guidance in those things. And you know, with my 30 years' experience of understanding this stuff. Um, I can just about work it out for myself, but I, uh, I can help with other people. And you could, have prob you could probably help me if, y if you understood this way of doing things. Um, but uh, yes, anyway, um, so the, this next course is going to be, it's going to be another two intro workshops and a six part course. I, w I want to move it away from Thursday evenings. I, I, I haven't been, um, I haven't liked that the time is so restricted. An, an hour and a half isn't quite enough to get um, the content across that I want to, uh, with space to chat and uh, explore as a group. Um, so, so the courses so far have been quite sort of, um, well, very intensive actually. And uh, it, it, they've worked. They've worked really well because I've sort of dedicated the time to um, getting the information across and what needs to be practiced. But um, I'm, I'm going to move them over to Sundays, Sunday mornings from 10:30 to one. So we got instead of an hour and a half, we get two and a half hours. Uh, so we get a catch-up time. We get a bit of a break. We get practice time and and some sort of um, more of a leisurely approach to the content, and plenty of time for Q and A. And um, it's going to be, it's not going to be every Sunday either, because I'm also doing, um, I'm also going to be running a, a 10 part foundation course for the British Wheel with, uh, I'll be doing that with Tuesday McNeil on Sundays, uh, one Sunday a month. So uh, the maximum, the most number of um, sessions I can do in a month will be three. And it's also coming up to summer, so, and so I'll be doing a few uh, weekend retreats. Last one went was amazing um uh yeah um so um yes it's going to be an eight, eight part course two intro workshops that people can book individually and and t to see if they want to join and then there'll be six dedicated course sessions and I if you take part in the full live interactive course you get um three one-to-ones with the with the course, three three half hour sessions that come with the course to help sort of iron out any complications for you. So uh, I haven't got that advertised yet. I haven't even, I've just sort of decided this morning having talk, talked to a few of my uh, regular students that want to carry on with courses. Um, but that, that'll be up soon. Other things I've got going on, well I mentioned next weekend um, well, I didn't mention it was next weekend. The Sunday is an intro workshop for the British Wheel Foundation course that will begin the following Sunday. So next Sunday, the 7th of June, um, it's just the two hour thing, morning thing. And um, Tuesday will be there, I'll be there. Uh, Tuesday will be uh, uh, laying out uh, what to expect on the foundation course. It's a British Wheel sanctioned and it sets you up to um, take part in a British Wheel teacher training course should you w want to carry on with that uh, but I, uh, and I and I will be there and I, I will guide, do a deep guided relaxation at the end at least and, and um, probably chip in here and there with my own ideas of things uh, I'm quite impressed that I have been invited uh, it was Tuesday they invited me but I'm quite impressed that the British Wheel sanctioned it and um, I think my um, CPD workshop for them helped because that w went down a storm. Uh, talking of which, I've got one for Yoga Scotland at the end of June. Um, that's that's advertised on the website and takes you to a direct link for booking. They've uh, they've they've uh, made a concession on the price, and you can I think get a view only place, which is even cheaper, and um, it's worth seven. Point five uh, ongoing training points for you Yoga Scotland people. So um, yes, uh, do sign up for that if you're if you're uh, wanting to s 
to um, get my take on um, how to how my approach links in with some of the traditional yoga practices and, and particularly um, the yoga sutras uh, uh, the, the the title of the workshop is uh, change perspective transform practice and it's around fixed mental impressions and how to um, sort of use the letting go of those fix those ideas in physical practice to refine your own understanding of things and to allow things to shift around um, yeah, that's the end of June. Uh, oh, Saturday, this Saturday. Um, I've uh, got another Saturday morning retreat, um, a gentle flowing class. I've extended the time so there's a bit more time for um, relaxation and chat and other things. So it's now two and a half hours from 10.30 a.m. on Saturday morning till 1.00. Uh, they're, they're very popular and gold members get a place for free at the moment still. So um, I would, if you're interested in taking a place there, then um, on, on, on next Saturday's uh, retreat workshop, then uh, sign up as soon as you can to make sure you get a place. You can always get a view only place that um, is much cheaper. Um, and anyone that books gets access to the recordings as well. So um, that's next Saturday. Anything else to mention? Uh, yeah, I've got my deep relaxation video up. It, uh, it was um, a one-to-one -one session with a client uh, who uh, arrived with migraine and she wanted a solution. And we, we got to the so solution for her migraine in, you know, five, ten minutes. And um, But it turned into a, a, a whole body deep relaxation, body mapping, breathing uh, session. And it's just 30 minutes long. And uh, it's it was so good. Uh, I asked her if I could um, use it and and offer it to other people, and she said yes. So um, you can get that for for dirt cheap, um, and it's yours for life. Uh, and there's the sacred breath course. It's on offer at half price for another week exactly. Next Tuesday, the price goes up to ninety seven pounds. It's currently forty seven. Um, sacred breath that's a that's a proper um, course uh, seven parts uh, of an intensive sort of course process plus nine individual five minute five to ten minute pranayamas guided pranayamas that you can use on a daily basis uh, what else yes my um, upcoming CPD course I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm going to call it so far it's been haptic proprioceptive and core intelligence this might be something to do with relationships. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the title is, but that, that, that'll come up soon. Yes, so British Wheel Foundation intro next Sunday and the Saturday, Saturday, next Saturday is a workshop that anyone can join. And then the, yes, the, the British Wheel Foundation begins the following Sunday. And that's about it, really. So... Uh, that'll do from me. Oh, well, yeah, of course, I've got my daily classes, uh, weekday classes, uh, one later in about 20 minutes and uh, another one this evening at 6.30 p.m. There's still spots for this evening's class if, you, if you'd like to book. Just £12 for an hour and a half, or hour and a quarter, I mean. Um, or £6 if you want to take view-only option and you use a coupon code for that. And there's another one tomorrow morning at 11 if uh, you'd like to join a gentle guided class with me. Okay, that'll do. That's enough promotion from me. Um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, the Envirosomatic Approach to Bodywork, and I shall look forward to seeing you same place, same time next week. Much love to you. Here we go. <laughs>